What is up guys? We're back with another video and today we're checking out this CPU cooler right here. This is the Scythe Fuma 3 and it might be my favorite CPU cooler of all of 2023. So let's go ahead and take a look. As we take a first look at the cooler itself, it is on the larger side of CPU coolers, but definitely not the largest that I've seen. I'll go ahead and put the official dimensions like I always do right here. The cooler also weighs in at 1,095 grams. Starting at the front of the cooler, we have our first fan, which is a Case Flex 2 Slim 120 millimeter fan. It's called Slim because it's only 15 millimeter thick. This is gonna allow for 100% RAM compatibility with this cooler. The fan is a PWM fan and will spin between 300 and 1500 RPM with a max airflow of 39.44 CFM and a max noise level of 23.8 dBA. Looking at the cooler from the side, we can see that we have a dual tower design and our fans are attached to the cooler using fan clips. The front heatsink tower is much thinner than the back tower and our center fan is also a Case Flex 2 but the normal model, which is 26 millimeters thick. This fan will also spin between 300 and 1500 RPM, but will have a max airflow of 67.62 CFM and a max noise level of 28.6 dBA. Looking at the back of the cooler, we can see the design of the heatsink stacks and their increased spin density. This is of course something that is a change from the previous version of the cooler. The back heatsink is actually cut off at the bottom, this ensures you don't run into any clearance issues with larger VRM heatsinks or rear IO covers. The top of the cooler is capped off, which really gives this cooler a more modern look from what we've seen from Scythe in the past. Each of the top caps does have the Scythe logo on it. Coming up from the base of the cooler are six six millimeter thick nickel plated copper heat pipes. These start at the base of the cooler and go up into the heatsink stacks in a U fashion, which is pretty standard when it comes to dual tower coolers. The base of the cooler is also made of nickel plated copper and is quite large. While there are some machining marks visible, the more concerning thing was a sort of liquid stain. I actually tried to clean this off with alcohol and it was just still there. I don't think this will impact cooling performance or thermal transfer, but I wanted to mention it. We're gonna be doing our installation here on an Intel Z490 motherboard. Now this installation should be pretty much the same across all modern Intel sockets. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is find the backplate and attach it to the backside of your motherboard, making sure the pegs go through the holes in your motherboard. Flip your motherboard over and take the plastic spacers and place them on top of the pegs. Be sure to place them with the rubber side down towards your motherboard. Then take the Intel mounting plates and place them on top of the spacers and secure them with the included screws. Apply the included thermal paste to your CPU and then carefully remove the middle fan from the cooler and also be sure to take off the plastic covering on the base. Then place the cooler on top of your CPU, lining up the screws on each side with the pegs in the mounting plates you've just installed. With everything lined up correctly, use the included screwdriver to secure the cooler. With the cooler secure, go ahead and reinstall the middle fan and be sure to connect the fans to the included splitter. The center fan connects to the black connection while the front smaller fan gets connected to the white connection. Finally, plug the splitter into your CPU fan header on your motherboard and you'll be all set. With everything installed, you're gonna have 100% memory clearance, which is really great if you do have RGB memory. The cooler does take up a good bit of space, but it's definitely not the largest cooler that I've seen. When it comes to testing, we're gonna be measuring both temperatures as well as noise levels. So here's a full breakdown of our test system. As we come to the end here, I really like this cooler from Scythe. It's really impressive what they were able to do from, you know, their Fuma 2 to the Fuma 3, increasing the fin density, in my opinion, making the cooler look a lot better and more modern. Um, and with that increased fin density, you're also getting a lot better performance. This cooler in our testing was 
at the top of the leaderboard, pretty much tied with the Noctua NHD 15 Chrome X Black, as well as the Cooler Master Master Air MA624 Stealth. And those are like two of the largest coolers that we've ever tested and two of the best coolers that we have ever tested. And this cooler is actually smaller and performs pretty much the same, which is really awesome. And then on top of that, this cooler is far less expensive. So those two coolers are right around $100, where this cooler is only $49.99. And just think of that extra money that you're saving. That can go towards, you know, a better SSD, more memory. I mean, you can make that $50 go a lot more with your PC build. So I really like that about this cooler. I think the price is what really seals the deal for me and makes it one of my favorite coolers of 2023. On top of that, it is really easy to install. While the cooler is a bit larger than something like a single tower cooler, it is very easy to install. The instructions are very easy to follow as well. And even though we do all of our installations outside of a case, you could pretty much install this with your motherboard mounted in the case, no problem. Now, if I was a nitpick about this cooler, I would say the only thing is that it is slightly louder than some of the other coolers that we've tested, but it's not something that sounds like a like an Intel stock cooler or something like that. I mean, it's slightly louder, but if you have headphones on, you're not gonna hear it at all. Um, so like I said, really like this cooler, probably one of my favorites of 2023. Now, if you have any questions about this cooler, definitely leave it in the comment section below. And I will have links below where you can go ahead and pick this up as well as our full written review over at thinkcomputers.org. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.